massive and unprecedented tire fall off, but in the end, it's Toyota and Denny Hamlin getting the win. Let's talk about NASCAR and the last great Coliseum. Hello everybody, welcome to Dirty Air. I'm your host Alex Lambert and let's talk about NASCAR at Bristol where Denny Hamlin and Toyota are able to get the win. Toyota really dominated this race. Uh, an unprecedented, very strange Bristol race with tire fall off. The tire was not laying any rubber down. It was, it was flying up to the top of the racetrack creating marbles at the top like in Indianapolis. Uh, we'll talk about that, we'll break down that, and then of course we'll go through the top 10, the top three drivers of the day, uh, and then of course we'll talk about next week at Coda. But let's go ahead and talk about this race at Bristol because this was something that was unprecedented that we did not expect to see going into today. Very strange Bristol race, but I'm not going to say it was a bad race because it was certainly entertaining. We'll, we'll put that out, right? I mean, it was more entertaining than Phoenix in my opinion. I, I thought it was fun to watch. Uh, the, the concern would be would you want to keep this moving forward? And I think that the quick answer is no. You, you don't want to have this happening every time uh, you go to Bristol. Now, at the same time, or, or a short track for that matter, it was certainly entertaining to watch, right, what happened today because you had the tires falling off after about 50 laps. Uh, the tires would fall off. And then at that point, you were, as, as Kevin Harvick said, you were kind of just playing chicken, right, because who's going to have the first, who's going to be the first car to have a flat tire? Who's going to be the car that falls off first and then throw that caution and then everybody can pit under that caution? I don't know if that's what you want. Uh, and this is kind of a hard subject to talk about because, like I said, the race wasn't bad. It was it was super entertaining. But I think if you're if you're Goodyear, if if you're NASCAR, you don't want to create the same thing moving forward, right? But it was certainly interesting to like read some of the some of the points from fans that are that that are online talking about this. And, and a lot of fans really liked it. A lot of fans really didn't like it because they didn't think it was good racing. It was weird in the middle of the race because you had the start of the race that was you know. They were they were running really hard, passing each other a lot. The tire fall off was real, but then you started getting to that point of the race where everyone had to save their tires so heavily that you couldn't really race. Like Kyle Busch in the back of the pack, Joey Logano, Ty Gibbs, who had a really good race, was trying so hard to save his stuff that he actually fell back a little bit, and that's where experience prevailed today. So I'm not going to say it took complete. It, it was it was driver talent taken out of it because you had different type of talent that was being used. Like Denny Hamlin said in his post race interview, uh, you know that he knew he had a good shot to win because he knew how to manage tires so well after running it at 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 Martinsville in, in, in his younger days, running at South Boston at certain tracks like that. So it was interesting to see how he compared it. Denny Hamlin, your winner. It was interesting to hear like Kyle Larson. He was really, he didn't like this style of racing. He was kind of against it in his interview. Um, didn't like it at all. Said he didn't even know how he got to fifth. He said he had no idea how he finished fifth. So it's certainly not very fun for him, right? And you, you listen to Josh Berry, who finished 12th, and started on pole, had a very good day. You could kind of hear him say it was kind of fun. So really interesting to hear all the different all the different strategies. Brad Kozlowski kind of said a, a, a few things that I thought were interesting like well this was good for today don't know if we want to do this moving forward which is kind of what I agree with is what Brad Kozlowski said but once again very strange race if you're NASCAR if you're Goodyear you don't want to have this repeated exactly the same right I think you want to make those tire compounds a little harder or give, give them an extra set of tires something to help that which NASCAR actually gave the teams an extra set of tires today so it was fun to watch it was fun to like see how the crew chiefs the teams were trying to break things down right you know you know, 200 laps to go four sets of tires 50 laps of tire but at the same time you could say if you want to the argument for NASCAR needs to bring this tire back to Martinsville and try to have the same style of racing. You want to try to recreate this at another short track, or you want to create this again at Bristol, uh, then, then you could say, um, well, then it's up to the teams, right? Because going into the race, then the teams need to strategize. They know how many sets of tires they have. They now know the tire fall off. How are you going to prepare that? Because honestly, if you go 50 laps on a run and you know the tires are going to start to wear in 50 laps, that's sort of the risk that you have to take. Do you go down pit road as the team or do you wait for your tire to blow? And, and you could potentially be the guy that blows a tire. It, that's sort of in the teams and drivers wheelhouse, right? Uh, the, the caution throws a wrinkle into it, but just a very strange race. My personal opinion, I, I don't want to see anything like this recreate. I mean, it was fun to watch today for sure. I don't think anybody's doubting that it was entertaining to watch today. It was fun to watch today. You saw those veteran drivers excel, and we'll, we'll take a look at that uh, uh, when we go through the top 10. But a um, very strange race. I, I don't want this to be created uh, m myself. Now, some fans really enjoyed it. Some fans didn't. This isn't the type of racing we want to recreate. And, and this is a sort of a theme for this season. You go to the Daytona 500, fuel saving the entire race. You go to the day for 300 of the, of the 500 laps where it's just saving tires. You're running slower. You're trying to almost like Ty Gibbs just giving up the lead so he doesn't have to run hard. 
I don't think that's what I want to see uh, every week. But, but, but we, we'll take a look. We'll see how this goes moving into Martinsville, right? We'll see We'll see what they do in the Martinsville and Bristol in the fall. It's definitely an interesting storyline. But let's go ahead and talk about uh, my top three drivers of the day before I go through the top ten because I just want to point out some drivers. And when I do this list, this is like top three cars of the day more or less, the fastest cars, the fastest driver of the race. And obviously I want to put Denny Hamlin up there because Denny Hamlin is the winner, getting another win for him, 51st career win. He's having an, a pretty good season. He's been fast most races this season. Uh, just hasn't had luck quite go his way, but definitely had a good run today. Once again, pr uh, uh, experience prevailed because Denny Hamlin knew exactly how to save. He knew how to get in a rhythm of running that car just perfectly to where he could get to the end of a run, and that's exactly what he did. That's why he was able to hold off his teammate, Martin Trix Jr., in the closing laps to get the win today at Bristol. This is his second win at Bristol in a row. He won there last year in the fall at the Bristol Night Race as well. So certainly Denny Hamlin is, uh, is feeling good right now about his season. By the way, this is five winners in five different races. My other driver is going to be Ty Gibbs because Ty Gibbs had a really strong day today, finished in the ninth position, but he was trying to save those tires all day long. But he was definitely the fastest car. I want to say led the most laps, led a majority of the race, came back from through the field multiple times and was able to salvage a solid ninth place finish. But Ty Gibbs, that win is knocking on the door. That first career win is right here. It's coming sooner than later. And I really thought it was going to be today, but he just couldn't quite pull it off. Just unfortunate circumstances for him with the strategy and the pit crew and stuff of that nature. So pit crews were very important today, which we'll get a little more into that as well. And then my third driver of the day is actually, I wanted to put Martin Trex Jr. up here or somebody else in the top 10. I actually want to go with Josh Berry because like I said, this list is fast as cars, drivers of the race, right? And Josh Berry starts having a really fast run, start on the front row. Really good day for Josh Berry. And he showed some speed today. And that's what we needed to see out of those SHR cars. You remember at Martinsville last year, uh, Ryan Priest essentially dominated the race until pit road incident uh, unfortunately occurred kind of kind of you know shooting his day in the foot but 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 Josh Berry very solid run today that shows you know the 33 year old rookie that shows that he can run up front have solid days and once again in his post race interview like he said he said it was fun to do what he did and that's somebody that did not get the win and that's the ones you want to listen to so it's a very solid day for Josh Berry finishing in the 12th position had a very good showing today I wanted to point him out as well but let's go ahead and go through the top 10 we'll go ahead and review everything that happened we had Denny Hamlin obviously get the win I talked a little bit about him Martin Trex Jr was solid all day. There's Toyotas all in this top 10 because Toyotas really dominated today's race from start to finish. It was the Toyota camp all day long. You had Brad Kozlowski and RFK Ford. Once again, those very consistent teams. I talked about this last week. Like Chris Buescher and Brad Kozlowski always finish together. And at least I want to keep pointing that out that Kozlowski, Chris Buescher, there's some chemistry there. Both of those drivers are now experienced and talented. And you go back to experience as well. Really, what is the youngest driver up here? Alex Bowman in fourth. And he's not young. He's been racing since his, his rookie season was in 2014. Uh, so definitely some experience there. And I know that was with a lower end team in 2014, but racing since 2014, nonetheless, and he has a lot of experience now. That's 10 plus years of experience in NASCAR Cup racing. Alex Bowman, a solid fourth place finish. And you had Kyle Larson. Like I said, he said he didn't even know how he got up in the top. That's Cliff Daniels right there because he can tell Kyle Larson exactly what to do. They have really good chemistry. Cliff Daniels is probably, in my opinion, probably the best crew chief in NASCAR right now uh, in the Cup Series. You go back to that 2021 season. You go back to some races this year where he just does things, and I'm like, wow, the way he presents things uh, to his crew and stuff is very effective, which is why he was able to get a driver that maybe didn't like this type of racing up to the front and get a solid top five finish. That's why they're very dangerous. Uh, the point standings still aren't out yet. I'm pretty sure Kyle Larson will still be leading the points following this race. Not only that, they're getting stage points every week. They're finishing in the top five every week. This team is dangerous right now, that five car of Kyle Larson. John Hunter Nemechek, another Toyota, solid run for him in the 42 car, was able to get a sixth place finish been having a somewhat really good season. You know, remember he came uh, back up from the Xfinity Series this year and is having a really solid start to his 2024 season. We'll see if that continues moving forward uh, and into the road courses next week. Chris Buescher, once again, like I said, talked about him with RFK. Just a solid day. That team is, is really strong right now. Uh, Chris Buescher is your 2022 Bristol winner. If you remember that back in the fall, the night race in 2022, wasn't quite able to get it done today, but was fast all day and showed some speed. So a solid seventh place finish. Chase Elliott, we finally saw some speed out of Chase Elliott. And like I said, this list here, just because how strong the strategy was, how, how strange this race was with the tire fall off, doesn't really show who the fastest cars are in order at all. Because uh, once again, that'd be like Ty Gibbs at the front, Josh Berry up there, right? Denny Hamlin, your winner, obviously, was really fast. But Chase Elliott had a really fast day today, a strong showing, was trying to go up there, dice it up a little bit, uh, try to take the lead away, was in the top five for the majority of the day. That's the first time, really, in 
man, maybe a year and a half now since that Talladega win in 2022, which is Chase Elliott's to date last last win. Um, that was the first time I saw him really competitive was today. So certainly interesting. We'll see how that number nine team goes moving forward. You had Ty Gibbs, once again, like I said, finished in the ninth position, was definitely the dominant car of the day, just didn't play the strategy completely right. And then, of course, Christopher Bale and Adam Stevens finishing in the 10th position. Another one of those Toyotas. There was one point where the Joe Gibbs, that's every Joe Gibbs Toyota in the top 10. Uh, and there was at one point of this, and one, two, by the way, as well. And there was one point in this race where those four Joe Gibbs Toyotas were one, two, three, four. It was a Joe Gibbs party today. It was a Toyota party all day long, really, from the start of this race to the finish of this race. Denny Hamlin led a bunch. Ty Gibbs led a bunch. It was really a Joe Gibbs show out. Uh, I do want to talk a little bit about some drivers that I have concerns for, and that is obviously going to be Joey Logano, who finished today in the 22nd position. And Joey Logano showed speed today. It wasn't like it was, you know, last week where he was just completely out of it. Showed a lot of speed early on in the race. Was up front. Was up front and a fairly later portion of the race. Didn't have the best pit stop at the end, but whatever he was doing on strategy, trying to save those tires, it was too much. And that, you can go back to uh, whatever you want to, or, or your racing background, like Denny Hamlin said, at South Boston. You can go back to things like that, but, but Joey Logano saved way too much, lost a ton of position in the middle of this race, and was not able to gain it back and end up finishing in the 22nd position. Joey Logano not getting good results this season. He's going to have to turn that around because his teammates are. You know, you go to Ryan Blaney, Austin Sendrick, who's having a solid Solid year, just getting caught up in some trouble now and then. But with Logano, fast cars, not getting the results. And that's that's a problem for any team, right? You can have the fastest cars in the world. If you're not getting any results, you know, what, what, do, you, what do you have to show for it? Uh, same thing with Kyle Busch. I want to talk about Kyle Busch because it's getting really bad. Spun around twice today. Uh, unfortunately, drove half a lap backwards at Bristol. He has a thing for driving backwards. But the thing about Kyle Busch is really frustrating because we know he's fast, right? I mean, we know he's fast at Bristol. He was dicing up, led some laps at Bristol, went from like, 17th to first in like 20 30 laps at one point that was insane that's like kyle bush at bristol right there unfortunately has problems on pit road and once again had that tire fall when as soon as that tire blew when he was sitting in second going for the lead trying to take the lead from denny hamlin he had a tire go out unfortunately from that point on he was completely unable to recover and and fortunately for him he's going to finish 25th today kyle bush has only finished in the top 22 races this season which was daytona and atlanta after that, it has been a really rough start to the season for Kyle Busch. They're going to have to find something. I don't know what's going on over there at RCR. I know Randall Burnett is a really good crew chief. I'm not questioning Randall's crew chief ability, but something's got to fix with this pit crew because it is really costing him a lot. There was one instance uh, right before the end of the second stage where Kyle Busch had a chance to get the wave around if he was going to be the first car a lap down. Unfortunately, got a, a pit road penalty. Had to go to the tail end of the longest line. Got to fix these mistakes on pit road. Kyle Busch's last pit stop, guess what? Had a slow stop, tire fell off, they had to stop the car, back the car up. Big problems for Kyle Busch on pit road. And where pit road matters probably more now than ever, Kyle Busch is right now. I would say RCR might be, I would say Kyle Busch's pit crew might be the worst in NASCAR. Constantly losing position, constantly making mistakes, getting penalties. That stuff really needs to be cleaned up. And they've been swapping crew members around all week, but something's got to happen. Pit crew coach, I don't know, whatever's going on inside that, that shop needs to be fixed and addressed now because Kyle Busch, the concern for not making the playoffs is actually real because if you're going to go into every race and you're going to have you're going to have a fast car every week, right? I mean, you're fast at Las Vegas, you're fast at Bristol, but you're going to finish 35th or, or 25th, 30th, 30th. You're not going to make the playoffs like that. You're getting zero stage points. He should have got stage points today. He got zero stage points and got a bad finish for the third week in a row. Very frustrating. They've got to clean that stuff in the number eight camp. I don't know what it is going on. I don't know why Pit Road is a disaster for that team. I don't know if it's money spending. I don't know if it's training problems. I don't know if it's just wrong people in wrong places. But something has got to change there because it was a problem last year. It's a real problem this year. And it could legitimately cost him where he cannot win a single race and can't make the playoffs. I, mean, I know it's really early to say that. That is a legitimate concern if this continues moving forward in, into the midsummer uh, going into the playoffs. We're going to have to talk about that. But that's really all I want to talk about after this race at Bristol. Like I said, it was an interesting race. It was a good race, in my opinion, to watch. It was entertaining. I don't want to see this again moving forward. But we do have Circuit of the Americas next week. The first road course race of the season should be interesting to see how that runs. Should be exciting. Once again, that new aero package that we have might change things up a little bit. But the road course racing has been pretty good the last few years with this new car. So it should be fun to see. Hopefully Kyle Busch does a little better um but obviously i'll do a race review following following nascar's first road course race at circuit of the americas that's it uh like and subscribe if you like the video please share the video if you can i, I do appreciate it if you do and of course about kyle bush once again outside the top 20 let's get rowdy